you probably have heard of something similar. Basically, Newton's third law says, for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. For example, if I push on this wall with 20 newtons, the wall would push back on me with exactly 20 newtons, but in the opposite direction. If I push with the 100 newtons, the wall would push back on me with the 100 newtons. That's why if I hit the table, my hand would hurt. And the harder I hit the table, the harder the table hits back on my hand, and the more my hand hurts. What if I push on this book with 10 newtons? How much do you think this book pushes back on me? 10 newtons, more than 10, or less than 10? Even though the book moved, and I did not, the book still pushes back on me with the same amount of force, 10 newtons. According to the third law, the action force and the reaction force have equal amounts in opposite directions, whether the object moves or not. So why did the book move while I did not move? One of the answers I often get from my students is I am heavier than the book. I am certainly heavier than the book, but is that the reason? Let's see, at school I have a heavy metal desk I use for this demonstration. But over here, this table is what I have, so this is what I'll use. I can push on the table and make it move. I can also sit in this chair and push again. This time, I'm the one that moves. So what decides which of us move? It's friction. If I push on the table with 10 newtons, the table will push back on me with 10 newtons. If 10 newtons is not enough to overcome the friction between the table and the floor, the table will not move. If 10 newtons is not enough to overcome the friction between the chair and the floor, I will not move either. If I increase the pushing force to 100 newtons, the table will push back on me with 100 newtons. If this 100 newtons is enough to overcome the friction between the chair and the floor, I would move. I can also push even harder so both of us move. So, in a tug of war game, if team A beats team B, which team must have pulled harder on the other team? According to the third law, the two teams pulled with equal amount of force. But why did team A win? Because team B had less friction. We will learn more about friction later. But to get more friction, we need to recruit heavier people and have them wear better gripping shoes for tug of war. Now, Let's go back and look at the wall again. If I push on the wall with 20 newtons, the wall would push back on me with 20 newtons. If I push with 100 newtons, the wall would push back with 100 newtons. How come the wall is so smart and knows exactly how much to push back on me? Remember the demonstration we did in the last video? Whenever we exert a force on an object, there is a deformation. Imagine the molecules in the wall are like the models you see sometimes in chemistry class, with balls for atoms and the springs for bonds. A harder surface means you have stiffer springs, and when you push on the wall, the springs get deformed and they push back on you. 
The harder you push on the wall, the more the deformation, and therefore, the harder it pushes back on you. So the action force and reaction force are always equal and opposite. If forces always come in pairs like these, shouldn't they just cancel each other? How come I can still push on this book and make it move? Because one force is from me and acts on the book, and the other force is from the book, act on me. So, if the action force and the reaction force act on two different objects, they do not cancel. However, if they act on the same object, they do cancel. For example, I can push myself. Now the action force and the reaction force both act on me. So they do cancel. That's why no matter how hard I push, I can never push myself that way. Or I can try to lift myself. Now the action force and the reaction force both act on me. So no matter how hard I lift, no matter how strong I am, I can never lift myself up. Okay, so how come I can still walk or jump up? When I walk that way, I have to push on the ground back that way. And that means that the ground is going to push on me forward. And that's how I get this net force to make me go that way. Or when I jump up, what I have to do is I have to push on the ground harder than usual. So when I jump up, I push on the ground harder than my weight. So the ground pushes back up on me more than my weight. So gravity pulls on me, that's my weight. And the ground pushes up on me with a force that's more than my weight. So I get this net force that's upward, and that makes me go up. It's uh, obvious uh, when we swim. See, when we swim, we push on the water back that way. So the water pushes back on us forward. So when you swim, you think you're working really hard, but uh, no, you're not the one that's making you go forward. It's the water. But of course, if you want to swim faster, you would push on the water harder, so the water will push on you harder. And that will make you go faster. I have a toy car here. It has a mechanism so that the, when I pull the car back and then let go, the car would roll forward. When the car rolls forward, the wheels rotate like this, pushing on the ground back that way. So the ground pushes on the wheels forward. And that provides the net force to make the car accelerate forward. Now here I have a styrofoam tray floating on water. And I'm going to put the car in there and you should be able to see that when the car accelerates forward, it pushes on the tray backwards, so the tray is going to move backwards, right? In the next video, I will test you with some more third law related concept questions. Be prepared. I will see you next time.